Welcome back, everyone. Uh, of course, when I alt tab it, uh, destroys the audio um, from the game because that's how games work these days. Anyway, welcome back, everyone, to well, me taking a look at a game. And as you can see, and as you can see from the title and all those things, let's not pretend you're actually surprised. It's Panzer Corps. Yes, I know it's pronounced Panzer Corps, but I'm gonna pronounce it Panzer Corps. Uh, this is an Empire Run Rommel move, by the way. If, you, if any of you remember Empire Run Rommel, he used to do this all the time. Like, pretend to be dumb and say I'm pretending to be dumb and still get angry comments like saying, eh, you're dumb. But anyway, uh, we're gonna be playing this, uh, this game that has been kindly given to me. Yes, this is a... Not really a sponsor, they didn't pay me to do this, but they did send me the, the game preview key. This is before the game's release. It's still a beta. Ooh, look at this. Look at all these campaigns. Um, it's the Wehrmacht campaign. Yeah, it's the preview build that's been sent out to influencers, which is what I'm supposed to be, I think. And uh, there's all these cool scenarios now. I just played one mission of the Poland one, so I will not really go too much into that. Um, I think I'm gonna start on general difficulty, but who knows. Con combat randomness is 50. There's a bunch of advanced options, but I don't really like particularly shroud. The map will be covered with shroud hiding both units and terrain. Nah. I don't like hiding terrain in these kinds of games. Iron Man. Oh, let's do Iron Man. Yes. Uh, specific race uh, race against our specific challenges. Race against time. Turn count in every scenario is reduced by five. David versus Goliath. On my units get five strength. You're up on a shoestring. You'll not receive any pre prestige. Now that's that's fine. That's fine. All this is fine. Now in case some of you do not know what this is, Panzer Corps. Um, is a pretty legendary turn-based strategy game that spawned a lot of games. Well, I believe the, the, the OG of this genre um, with this kind of formula was a game called Panzer General, but like that was back in the 90s. But like the m most of uh, what a person like my age or perhaps most of your age is gonna have played in the realm of turn-based strategy game in World War II settings, which, to be fair, is pretty specific, comes from Panzer Corps. Um, and Panzer Corps had taken heavily from Panzer General, and then a bunch of games took heavily from Panzer Corps, such as uh, Order of Battle, and, um, well, eventually Unity of Command, but Unity of Command sort of evolved upon the formula a little bit. Anyway, uh, the sort of basic formula of Panzer Corps is that you're taking this Panzer Corps, or this, in general, army, through the grand campaign of World War II, and uh, you're put into these individual scenarios where your individual units will perform better or worse, and you're gonna have to build them up, and, you know, uh, train them uh, in combat, and not lose them to not lose all of your experience, all this kind of stuff, and your army sort of stays the same for the majority of the campaign. Um, and again, it takes you through the progression of World War II with the ability of sometimes having um, like little alternate history scenarios like, uh, you know, what if uh, the invasion of Norway had been done a little bit differently or whatever. And so that's what we're gonna do. Um, so as a newly minted general in the German Wehrmacht, it falls upon you to spearhead the German invasion of Poland to prove your metal in combat, of course. Um, so we can either choose Poland South scenario, which is going to give us bonus prestige rewards. Now, prestige is uh, the game currency. It's money. Uh, it's supposed to represent you, you know, obviously, like, uh, securing favors from the Wehrmacht High Command, because, of course, that was a, uh, um, um, like, uh, <laughs> of course, the, the German war economy and, you know, requisitioning system was totally not dysfunctional. And the North Assault is going to give us prototype equipment rewards. Now, I'm not sure exactly what those are going to entail, but uh, one, because of because that sounds cool, you know, to do the whole Wonder Waffles at some point. Uh, get to use them. I don't know. I don't even know if they're in the game yet. Uh, again, this is a kind of pre-release. It's about to release in like a month or so. Um, 
build, uh, but also because Poland North is the scenario that I've already played. It, it literally, I've only played one scenario, which is this one uh, with Poland North. So we're gonna call our general X or X uh, X X X Manstein. Uh, X, X, X. Tiger Ace. X. And, um, so now we, we get to choose traits, and apparently we have a portrait. Oh, that's so cool! Look at all these guys with iron crosses! Man, look at that. Oh, we, we can be, like, a... A shadow thing. Uh, fun fact: one of my, my, I think my first Steam profile picture because at the time I was 13, I didn't, I didn't know how to upload my own profile picture. Uh, was um, something like this, uh, but this this guy looks like Kriegsmarine or something, maybe Luftwaffe. Uh, but the the guy I had chose was a kind of German tank commander kind of look, but very young from. There was this weird feature in Steam back in the day where you could, in certain games, could offer profile pictures for you. Like, you get to pick between, and, you know, a game that I played was um, called uh, Red Orchestra. And one of the pictures you could choose was something that looked kind of like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this one. Um, and it was just like the stereotypical 13-year-old Nazi kid. Anyway. Um... Or, sorry, not Nazi, German history enthusiast. So basically, we get traits. So we're obviously gonna pick the inept logistics because, I mean, what else are we gonna pick? And for every, like, deficiency that you get, you get more, um, buffs. Combat results can never be better than predicted. <laughs> that's bad. Holy shit, that's bad. Um, that's really good if you pick a lot of, uh, or not a lot of uh, randomization, though, I suppose. Poor ground control. Enemy units can freely move around the zone of control. Do not take that. That's important. Reduce supply at the beginning of their turn. Nah. Chaotic fire. Units spend few points of ammo on each attack instead of one. Uh, see, like, at the beginning, that's not going to be a problem. But later on, I think that that's going to be a big issue. Each attack deals one point less damage to enemy entrenchment. Eh. Slow modernization can upgrade no more than two units per mission. That doesn't sound like it's gonna be that difficult to deal with. Fear of the unknown, cannot order units to move for fog of war, no thanks. Cannot purchase artillery, no. Cannot purchase air units, no. Cannot give overstrength to units. Now, overstrength can be useful, so I'll keep that. Retrograde gets new equipment six months later than normal. No, we want to be the Wonder Waffles. Can I give elite replacements to units? Oh, that's pretty important to keep the, the army XP up. Can I use replacements in the middle of battle? Do the breakdowns, you know, randomly lose move points and attack actions at the beginning of each turn. That sounds like a lot of annoying RNG. So yeah, we'll, I guess, uh, keep these ones and we'll take... I guess 10 to 20 random prototypes in this, each mission. I, again, I don't know how the prototypes are going to work, but yeah. I'm going to take that. Uh, Panzer General, all tank units cost 25% less slots. Now, units don't really cost like 10 slots from what I've seen, so that doesn't sound like the best idea. Um, this we get more prestige for capturing flags, which are objectives we'll see uh, in a little bit. On the first three turns of every battle, you get an initiative bonus. Basically, you can move faster. That's not the greatest. I do like the deep recon map around all primary objectives is permanently revealed. Plus one movement point across minor rivers. Experience growth rate. Additional auxiliary slots. Again, I haven't played with that, so I do not know. That sounds cool. The Trophies of War gets two times more captured equipment. Um, deadly Grasp, Encircled Enemy Units suffer two times penalties, or casualties, or two times penalties. Yeah, that sounds really, really good, because guess what? We're the Germans. Now, Encirclement in this one just means um, flank attack. It's just another term. Starts game with three additional heroes. And here, Veteran. Perimeter Control, Friendly Units, and a Hex Cancels. Oh, that could be very very good but fine Let, let's do this one so there we go this uh 
1st of September 1949, you know, um, here, here comes the Wehrmacht over the border. Please have a seat, I'll speak with you shortly. He's just some random general. The briefing officer picks up, picks up his telephone. Yes, I'm still here. As I was saying, we're well established here at Yastrov, and the newly promoted general is here with me. Pushed on the other line is speaking. It's Adolf Hitler. Are you certain they're ready for frontline combat? They're just about to take the first steps of Fall Weiss across the border. The person on the other end of the line is speaking. I see. Yes, that is quite an impressive recommendation. I do not know exactly who is going to be recommending us, but the person on the other line. Well, this old man remains unconvinced. Well, you, my friend, are old stuff from the First World War. Glory to the Fatherland! <laughs> the briefing officer hands <laughs> up his telephone. All right, Herr General. It looks like you're officially part of our invasion of Poland. So I better brief you on the current situation. Uh, primary objective is to capture all victory has exes. Um, as you can see, we're deploying your new Panzer Corps to Jastrov to combine with elements of Kluge's 4th Army. Your immediate objective is to cut the Danza Corridor by advancing to the Vistula River. Basically, what we're doing is we're reaching East Prussia from uh, mainland Germany. Our enemy is undoubtedly planned for this maneuver to link, blah 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 blah. We can preempt them. They're gonna come with reinforcements, probably. To fully take control of the corridor, though, these two major crossings of the Vistula must be occupied. If you see the opportunity, uh, crossing the Vistula here in a flanking maneuver could help you take your objectives easier. Definitely. Good luck in your first combat operation, Herr General. It would hate for it for be your, to be your last. Wow, damn. So there we go, there's a deployment phase at the beginning. We have 23 core slots out of 28. This is basically our pop cap. We have all these nice little tabs. There's a chat. Um, XD, you're bad. Good luck, have fun. Um, I suppose that's for multiplayer. And there's all these units. Broken Pioneer, these are good for crossing bridges. Cavalry, these are bad. Uh, Pioneer. These are good against cities and entrenched positions, which is gonna come in very handy. Wehrmacht infantry and grenadiers. Uh, grenadiers are just better than infantry in every, in every way. All factions, ooh. We can only see the Germans though. Then there's all the tanks. This is one of the parts uh, where um, really like the Verabu side of these games comes out. There's like all the models, you know, with their own stats, obviously. Uh, since this is Poland, we only have Panzer 1, Panzer 2, Panzer 35T, and Panzer 38T. There is recon units, which are very useful. Um, Pack 38, um, those aren't really all that important right now. There is Flak, self-propelled, uh, and non-self-propelled artillery. Self-propelled and non-self-propelled fighters, uh, different tactical bombers and strategic bombers now we have five slots available apparently this strategic bomber is like really cheap on the slots why the hell is it only one slot i will never know um now on the five points what i did last time was to get a stuka Oh, you can overstrength Stukas? Okay, but like overstrength makes the unit cost more slots, so. And that worked out pretty well, so I shall do that again. So we're up to 26. That means we only have two left. We could get a couple of one uh, unit cost. We could get a recon, and that would be useful. But at the same time, I feel like more artillery is going to be necessary. And I will put it on an Opel Blitz so that it is a uh, faster purchase. And now we deploy. Now, obviously, the tactical bomber is going to be in the airfield regardless of what we do. And I guess at the start, considering the situation, the artillery piece can go here as well. And we can also... Um, We can also, if we go here, no, wait. We can also upgrade certain units. So as you can see, like my Panzer II could be upgraded if we want to a Panzer 35T. Uh, but, yo, wait a second. Uh, cancel. Oh, 
Huh, apparently a Panther II uh, costs the same amount of, um, of pointos, or sorry, of uh, slots as the Panther III. See, like, I was 100% expecting that to not be the case. Can I upgrade the Wehrmacht infantry into grenadiers? Yes. Um, can I see the unit slot cost out here anywhere? Nope. I need to cancel and go all the way back to the purchase units. Yeah, like for example, the Grenadiers are... Um... Okay, 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 I like that. Um, I guess it's gonna tell me if that's like unallowed or whatever. Uh, so we're gonna, I guess, upgrade... No. I didn't want to undeploy you. Uh, we're gonna upgrade you to a Panzer 38 t and redeploy you back. Uh, this is just the deployment phase. We can do whatever we want in this phase. And I might as well upgrade the other Panzer to 38 Ts. Now, like, when, fa when facing infantry, that would not really, like, make any difference. But when we face Polish tanks, and we will, uh, that's gonna make a lot of a difference. And since we took that, like, slow modernizer uh, trait, we can't upgrade anyone else. We can't, like, really redeploy. Or, well, we, we could, I suppose. But, um... Everything that we've got kind of makes sense-ish. Yeah, I do have a Pioneer, which needs to go down here. Can I undeploy? No, I cannot make you... Yeah, there we go. Let's end the deployment and finally get into the combat side of things. Okay, so um, what happens in this game is uh, it's turn-based, right? And yeah, turn-based games are cool. Um, <laughs> now... This is gonna be interesting. So, oh shit, right. Uh, the last time I did this, I decided to upgrade my infantry with uh, trucks, but I didn't do that this time, so fine. So as you can see, we move our units around, and unfortunately we use the <laughs> bloody left mouse button, which is really, really annoying. So what I actually do all the time is I keep the unit list on and I just select the units with this so that I do not, because both selecting units with left mouse button and uh, moving units with left mouse button happens. So I've had a lot of uh, bad experiences with uh, my units just sort of not doing exactly what I would have preferred. Anyway, uh, Basically, the crux of these types of games is to use the correct units against each other. And I'm gonna close my Google Chrome so that the game's run game runs slightly faster. Uh, so, like, for example, here we can see that there's an anti-tank gun out in the open. If we send in our tanks there, as you can see, the predicted combat results is pretty even. And it's only pretty even because we already have units around here, so we already have combat bonuses up against them. If... On the other hand, we utilize um, support units like artillery and airstrikes. As you can see, their like little unit number is going to um, it's going to become more red from from like white to more red, and that represents their morale going down. So yeah, that's pretty good. And then you use your infantry instead of your tanks, obviously, and you make them run away. Ah, uh, shit. Crap, that's not good, uh, because this unit exhausted their movement by moving up to the anti-tank gun, so now they cannot do actually anything. But, I've got a Panzer one, So I can come in, kill the anti-tank gun, which was at, like, red uh, morale. It's basically like they're routing away, so they're not really gonna fight back. And I use the overrun feature on tanks. When tanks kill a unit, they get more movement. They can use, the, use up the rest of their... Uh, the rest of their movement to move somewhere else, and I can capture the flagging at 50 prestige, which is money. And money is money. Now, um, I do have some other Polish uh, to DOF. Uh, there's a nice little armored car down here, which we're gonna uh, bomb with our planes. Up here, there's some Polish infantry. And uh, I'm gonna use my tanks against that because they're they happen to be in the open So easy peasy and as you can see now they're encircled so they get even more penalties uh, Thanks to my ability my tanks only take one casualty 
there, people take a lot. And as you can see, it even gives us like the, the pocket, how it looks like, although shit. Now my artillery is friend by them. And so now that we have used up all of our movement points, basically the only thing we have left to do. Oh, there's also the strategic mode in case you then, it's pretty cool. Uh, allows you to see things a little bit better. We can just end the turn. And oh no, the Polish have planes as well. So they have an airbase up here. And oh damn. So the Polish armored car decides to move into my pioneers, but that's no real big issue. Polish cavalry comes into my tanks. Oh look, it's the cavalry charge against the panzers. Have you ever heard of that before? Um, anyway. Right. Would we kill that guy? No, we wouldn't. It's really annoying. So I'm gonna move up my Wehrmacht infantry. And hopefully they're gonna like die or something. Ah, man, these guys. Oh, but I've, I've got a tank, right? So I can overrun and move. Oh, shit. Here's some more Polish infantry. So as you can see, I'm moving like really, really fast with my Panzers. And that's gonna make them vulnerable to potential like encirclements. Now, I do have tactical bombers. Let's try to see if, yep, there is a Polish infantry over here. Uh, so we should be a little bit scared of that. And bombers in general, like especially tactical bombers, are really effective against armor. So that's something that I'm definitely going to exploit. Now my artillery piece, wherever I move, uh, like it shows me which attacks I can do, so I can only like move, I can only use it to attack this turn if I move here and I get a shot off on the armored cart. Really? You motherfucking survived, that's annoying. Anyway, pioneers get the point and the pioneers are gonna, gonna then advance south because here's there's a, there's a river crossing and pioneers are slightly better at that. And also, especially, there's a lot of city environments, so that's where they're good. In general, generally speaking. All right. Still got this artillery piece, but whatever it does this turn, it's not gonna really get a shot off on anyone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tank. Hmm, shit. Ooh, look at that. Okay, that's really good. Because that mostly neutralizes this infantry. And this other infantry is gonna uh, get sort of stuck on my Panzer one. Which is going to allow my uh, Panzer 38 to encircle the cavalry. And that allows my artillery to move up basically without fearing, like, getting attacked. Yeah. Now, my tanks are gonna take pretty heavy losses this next turn, but that's fine. Oh, right. I still have this one. Oh, thankfully, these pioneers actually have um, trucks. So, as you can see, after killing the, the unit over here, they can truck around and be much faster. Now, I... This is cheating. Since I've played the scenario already, I knew that there was an anti-tank on there, so I didn't move to this tile, like, right next to it. Man, I love these gra- like, these kinds of graphics. Like, they're not advanced, but having these kinds of graphics on this kind of game is just- Oh my god, yes. Anyway, so basically, the whole idea of not moving here is that if I moved here, I moved to a tile adjacent to a unit that's in the fog of war, and that's gonna trigger an ambush, and they do a lot more damage. Plus, my guys would have been in their trucks, which makes them more vulnerable. Plus, the trucks are a mechanized unit, or, you know, a mechanical unit, and so they take more damage from the anti-tank gun. So, they would have been just absolutely obliterated by this anti-tank gun ambush. Instead, what's gonna happen is, next turn, I'm just gonna walk up and flamethrower him. There we go. Here comes the aircraft, obviously. Shit. Oh, actually, these are strategic bombers, I think, from the animation. So, as you can see, they're not really doing as much... Oh, shit, my panzer has been encircled. No, do not encircle my panzer, that's the opposite of what's supposed to happen. And as you can see, like the 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 cavalry, since they had been encircled and their morale was down, they were able to move up to my artillery piece, but they weren't able to actually get an attack off. 
which is obviously quite good. All right, will you kill them? No, you will not. So I'll move up my infantry, get an attack off, and wow, just absolutely exterminate the horses. Now, um... It's predicted that you do five damage to the anti-tank gun, so... I guess I'm gonna whittle, whittle down at the anti-tank gun in a couple of turns. That way. Ooh, wow. We actually made the anti-tank gun run away, so that means that we can push in the infantry with a force to march, take bigot, and kill the AT. Awesome. That means the next turn we can capture this airfield. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, indeed. Alright. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the panzer here. Get an encirclement on the infantry. But before I attack, I'm gonna utilize my Stuka to reduce their morale. And then I'm gonna Stuka the cavalry because they're in the open and they're gonna take a lot of damage. Oh my god, yeah! Good. So now they're starting to feel the pain a little bit. What I'm gonna do is, uh, this Panzer One has experience, so I'm gonna Elite Replace, which is gonna give him nine models instead of uh, whatever it had before. And I guess I'm gonna push in with the Panzer as well. Shit, I actually did not use my artillery attack. That would have definitely destroyed their morale earlier, and it would have made my other attack a lot more effective. Big misplay. As you can see, like the, the utilization of units is pretty important. Now, I could move my artillery piece, my other one, here. It would be protected from these units by the panzers. And I'm not sure if there's like gonna be random Polish units attacking me from there. So I'm actually gonna... I'm actually gonna be conservative about it. Move it here. There we go. You can still move, but I don't think any of these movements are gonna be particularly important or effective. Yeah, so end the turn. Of course, here comes the random bombers. Now, I could have bought a fighter and dealt with, but yeah, exactly. Oh, damn. Even with my being more Oh, wow. Okay. See, like, my tanks over here have survived a turn thanks to the fact that I replenished them, and now their morale's back up, so they can, they can do some serious hurt. And as you can see, despite the fact that this Polish tank is at 10 strength and mine is at 7, we pretty much crush them. That's mostly thanks to the fact that we um, upgraded them to 38 Ts. All right, he's running away, but that's what the tanks are for. Overrun, very good. Although, well, he, I guess he like drove for a forest, so he's less effective. And as you can see, if we use our Stukas on the um, on the tankettes, that's gonna massacre them, really, really, really bigly. Bigly, that's not an English word. Then I'm gonna artillery them. And only then, I am going to tank them. Save the best for last. Now, I'm hoping that he runs away. No. He does not run away, which means that I cannot utilize... Because you cannot stack units on top of each other. And even though the, the planes are in the airspace, you still cannot stack a plane onto a plane. And after you, you get a... You know, an attack off, you can't move out. So, I was hoping for him to be, like, pushed back so that my other tactical bomber could come in and finish him off. Damn it! I just wasted... Oh, shit. I, I could just do the undo. Please. Damn it. Fuck. 
fuck. That's not good. Um, because now this artillery is still in the zone of control of the tank. Like, if I move out, I think he's gonna get an attack of opportunity on me. So I'm just gonna give him replacements instead. And I'm also gonna give replacements to this tank, I suppose, because it's not like I can do anything useful with him this turn. And I'm gonna keep this tank here so that... Um, he gets in the forest, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna keep this tank here so that if the next uh, if next turn the tank cat decides to be dumb, I can still, you know, use the Panzer 48. And we still have the Southern group. Now, guess what? Wait, what? <laughs> okay, well, that was unexpected. I honestly expected to, there to be a unit there. That's what happened last time and I was on a lower difficulty, but I suppose the AI is being a little dumb. So actually, I'm gonna move the tank here. Oh wow, that actually apparently encircles the, the, the guy. Okay, interesting. And uh, the reason why is that next turn he's gonna be uh, on a beeline to the south. Oh. It's a fucking Renault FT-17. And obviously my infantry is in the open, so they're not gonna have fun with that. Oh, damn it. Of course. Shit. That's where- that- those were the horses that we sort of crushed earlier on. They ran away fast. Now, we could just capture this airfield. What that does is, if we take a look, my planes right now cannot reach the front lines. Um, so... If I just rebase my aircraft to this airfield next turn, they'll be able to do that. All right. I need to find a way to finish this tank head off. So I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna bomb him with this guy. Then I'm going to do that. Look at this 38T to the river crossing. I'm gonna send the infantry to the forest here to recon, which means that we discovered this guy out in the open. Now up here, there's another airfield which we want to capture. And I can do that pretty easily with the Panzer I. And I'm also gonna send the artillery in there to whittle down this infantry. This Chev town is not necessary for um, for victory. The victory points are Chelmno, Grujad, and obviously Bigoch, which we just captured. So th those should not be issues, really. All right. Come on in. Hmm. I was hoping that he'd run away. Because that would have allowed my artillery to make a much better move next turn. But they still could do something like this. And I like how they're a horse-trained wagon, you know, that that realistic German army feel of 1939. Did we miss anyone? Oh yeah, right, the pioneers. Now the pioneers fared a whole lot better against these guys than I expected. So let's actually let's actually crush this guy. And I'm also gonna move down here, uh, not for any better terrain features, but so that my Panzer 48 t next turn can move up. Although that might have been a bad idea because it might allow the FT-17 to come in and attack my um, Panzer 38s while they're crossing the Vistula, but whatever, we'll see. And as you can see now that they have lost the southern airfield, the enemy, t the enemy aircraft are uh, rebasing up here to refuel and rearm. And then they're coming out and attack. Fucking hell, what a piece of shit. Oh, he's got a tag here. I hadn't realized that. Crap. That's not good. Alright. Let us think this through. You are now in circle, my friend. 
And I also happen to have a Stuka, which can reach the TKS tank at up here. This Stuka cannot reach any fucking buddy this turn. So, he rebases. This tank is not in a good way this turn, so he replenishes. And I'm doing a lead replace, which might be a bad idea in the long term, but we'll see. Now, the whole idea with this had been to capture up the airfield, so... Let's try to sort of punch through this... Polish tank at as early as possible. In the meantime, I'm gonna do this. Oh wow, that was effective! Oh crap, he's got an anti-tank gun here. As you can see, that that um, anti-tank gun is supporting his um, supporting his infantry. So. Shit. All right, the tank is neutralized up here. Damn it. Not as neutralized as I hoped, apparently. Oh. Okay, he runs away there. He's basically dead. And I cannot retreat. Nope. I've exhausted my options for this turn. Yeah, and now he's gonna attack, probably. Oh shit, he's even gonna bring up the anti-tank gun. Although apparently the anti-tank gun is encircled. He's encircled himself, which is hilarious. Oh, that Polish fucking, like, big brain play. But guess what? That means that I can do a big brain play too and kill his airbase. Now, I am going to encircle him and hope that the game mechanics are on my side. Yes, he did not get an attack of opportunity. That is amazing. I've just out big brained the AI. <laughs> Which is not that great of an achievement, obviously. Now. Yes. I'm gonna use this turn to elite replace my pioneers. The 14 strength. Ooh, that's gonna do fucking a lot of damage. Yeah, I need to do this. Wait, what? <laughs> Damn it. So now I need to somehow deal with this tank. Yeah, I need to I need to use my bloody bomber on this guy. Which is annoying. I had wanted to use them on something else, but the Blitzkrieg can continue. Uh, and now my tanks are on the other side of the river. And he gets an overrun, which means that I can just replace him with extra units. And I can start to bombard the infantry in the cities. Now Infantry in cities is really, really fucking tough to, you know, dislodge. Alright, because he's encircled, I hope that I can just, um, sort of bugger off. Yep, I can, most definitely. And I can use my 38T to deal with the TKS, which is obviously a much, favor much more favorable matchup than anything else. And then that frees up my infantry to move down and deal with the enemy infantry and the shitty terrain with the anti-tank guns. So, much better than my armor. I wonder if this infantry is gonna come out and play with my artillery piece. <laughs> As you can see now that they have no airbase, they have no planes. Oh shit, that infantry though comes on and plays. Okay, that, that'd be quite annoying. Aw, oh, damn it! That bloody tankette. So annoying. 
All right, deal with him. Ooh, overrun, he is dead. Now the tanks up here are gonna be worthless in the near future, so he should come down like that. And then I get the infantry up here. All right. One plane bombs that, one plane bombs... I suppose this. All right, the Pioniere are gonna be useful. Now, artillery needs to take out the infantry that was... Are you fucking for real? Okay, well... Whatever. Yeah, that, that makes it, that makes all of this a little bit more difficult. Now, yeah, using the pioniere to deal with the deal with the infantry here is gonna be definitely advised. But they look pretty dead after a couple of attacks, so we can take Chelno pretty quickly. Got no one else down here. No one else can do anything. Well, this tank can, but as you can see, it wouldn't really be useful. We just use a, lose a bunch of Panzer ones for nothing. Tanks in the streets of cities, not the greatest. Oh wow, he's actually attacked me. That, that was suicide. Is he gonna attack me again? He suicided two of his units. That's amazing. First Pioneer has been decorated with Heroic Defense Award, level one, Survivor. As long as this unit has more than one strength, it will always survive an enemy attack. Amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the... Uh, actually, I need the truck to be here. Because that artillery is dying this turn. But if I move through here, will that... Uh, no, that will not. All right. VP acquired. Replenish the pioneers and get ready for one last attack. Now we have plenty of time, so I'm gonna first deal with this guy to get more prestige. Tam. I don't think I need this. I need this uh, Panzer 38, so I'm just gonna replace some. I'm gonna replace the infantry too. Before the for sort of final assault, and I'm gonna get some damage off on them with my tanks. There we go. So on turn 10, I'm gonna be able to. Actually, we might need one more turn. Let's see. We use this tank to improve the encirclement. Oh, that's that's pretty good. All right, now they're out of the city. You know, that was not worth it. 50 prestige for all that we've lost. I think that that's gonna cost quite a bit more than 50 prestige to, to replace those losses. All right, start to bomb that nice little city. Oh shit, we actually had the plane. Or, well, they're out of range, okay. All right, bombs them. Good. Now they're pretty damn encircled. Pioneers to take care of their entrenchment. I think the entrenchment is this bar down here that you see with like all the dots. Yeah, we're gonna need one more turn. Oh no, we're not. They're gonna run away and we can send in the wagons. Victory pulling north. There we go. So that was the first mission. I had fun. <laughs> I actually had fun. And so yeah, uh, 
how long did I actually record that? 45 minutes, so that was pretty long. That was probably part because I, you know, all the introduction and explaining. But yeah, uh, all the kill losses ratio. There we go. Uh, so, that was pretty successful. And uh, next time, we're going to be continuing the Polish campaign, I suppose. Um, I'll definitely try to edit out the videos as much as possible. Like, try to cut out lull times or times when I'm doing uh, pretty regular stuff. But other than that, um, so far I'm liking the gameplay. And uh, yeah, we will see how it continues. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And on this loading screen, I'll tell you that I'll see you soon. So there we go. Book River is the next one. 15th of September.